Okay, Michael here, everybody. Welcome back to U-Boat. This is episode number three of our U-48 career. It is currently September 9th, 1939, 4.05 p.m. We are currently underwater in the North Sea. We just left the last sunken vessel that we took care of right now, the Empire Ribble. We left the rest of our crew members on the surface and we are going underwater right now because we are going to check the hydrophone again just before our radio man and our skipper get tired just to make sure that we aren't going to miss anything out here before we continue along if so we will put them in alert mode so they won't go to sleep but it's not looking like we are going to find anything. Okay, no big deal. So let's surface our boat. And we are going to continue along. We are doing quite well. Let's take a look at our journal here. You can see our patrol going all the way to September 1st. So we have sank... Empire Archer, that's one ship. Empire Zephyr, that's two. And Empire Ribble, that's three. I thought we had sank more than that. Oh, yep, there's Bermuda, so four. So we've sank four ships so far, everybody. Four on this patrol, piling on the tonnage as suggested by the last episode, but we are going to continue along here. You guys know the drill by this point. As soon as I have another contact for you, whether it be on the surface or below the waves, I'll be back with an update. Okay, it is now the next morning, and although we haven't had any contacts just yet, the weather is starting to turn rainy on us. That's no big deal. The visibility doesn't seem to be dragging down too much but one thing I didn't notice is our skipper has an upgrade here he can get another attribute added to him because he leveled up so let's see what we can give him he already has linguist which is absolutely amazing he can communicate in most languages so that is fantastic let's see what we can give him here focus the officer traces enemy ships by Uzo no we're not really needing that Gunner shoots more accurately. That might be useful. Now, alarm or supporter. When stress on board rises to 100% for the first time. Um, let's go with Gunner. We'll give him Gunner. So he's good. So he's a gun better Gunner now. So let's look inside the ship as well. Let's look at how many torpedoes we have left. We only have two more in the bow. Let's check the... Let's check the stern here. And we only have one in the stern, so only three more torpedoes left. But I'm pretty sure we have plenty of deck gun ammunition that we can go through as well. So we're going to continue along on the surface here and see if we can spot somebody. And once we do, we're going to go after them. Three torpedoes, let's aim for three more ships. And then we'll see how many we can get. This may be the last episode of the patrol. Who knows? Okay, we do have some propeller noise. It is now 12.21 p.m. on September the 10th, so only a few hours later, we did pick up a contact on our hydrophone. Let's see if we can go head this ship off and fire a torpedo at her, depending on whether or not it's a neutral. And if it's a neutral ship, we will investigate. So let's go check it out. Okay, everybody, that is a neutral vessel from Norway, per usual, whenever we spot a neutral vessel out here. We're going to go send a team out to investigate and see if we can't find any of these ships carrying suspicious cargo. So let's give a little bit of speed here so we can intercept. And let's get right on the side of her. And hopefully she will just kind of slow down on her own. It's currently 3.07 p.m. So let's stop the boat right here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. So stopping the ship. And hopefully 
we are close enough. We can get a little bit closer just to be safe. Click to interact. Let's see what we got. Send a delegation over. Of course, our skipper's tired. Our main linguist guy, always. We always come across these ships in the afternoon when he's too tired to do anything. So we're going to send him. We'll give him a helmet. And uh, we cannot send... Oh, we can send our other leader. Okay, last time it wouldn't let us. That's cool. All right, let's give them some ranks. And let's see how this goes. All right, Captain the Freighter helps you crew. He greets you with welcome in like normal. He introduces himself as Edward Evans. He only knows the basics of German speech. Okay, so we are going to search the cargo hold first. And I'm going to speed up the video. Okay, officer walked around, talkative sailor, as usual, woman from Hamburg, yep, regarding the search, nothing suspicious was found, okay. Medical supplies, just like the last one. Didn't mean to do that, meet the captain at his office, what should we do next, let's ask him for the documents. Let's see. They're written in English. Spot some references about Port of London. If your interpretation is correct, the ship is not involved in a war effort. All right, well, we can accept that. Let's return to the ship here and let them go on their merry way. Uh, let's go ahead and have a radio operator send that message out that we inspected that ship. If we look out here as well, we did get a message from BDU that we can go after this convoy out here. There's a freighter out there carrying crucial technology. We are going to avoid this. And the reason why I say that is because the most recent time we went after a convoy that was this close to the British shores here, all the boats were just kind of going in circles and going all over the place and you know the depth here is only 33 meters and it I guarantee you if it's crucial technology, it's probably one ship being escorted by five destroyers, five warships, and it's just not going to be worth it, and it's going to put us in a situation that I'd rather avoid, and that has happened in my own personal game, the career that we aren't using for YouTube, so we're just going to avoid that, everybody. Just wanted to let you guys know in case you noticed that there, so let's keep going. We are going to set a course more to the northeast here, and keep a lookout for any more freighters that we might possibly come across. Okay, it's only been a few hours and we have another sound contact here, a very busy North Sea. Let's see, what direction are they headed in here? Looks like they are headed away from us, but that's no big deal. We should be able to intercept them. Let's surface the vessel, well, our vessel. Let's give us some speed. Surface, and let's see if we can not go find them. Okay, we are sneaking up on this ship right here. Like I said, we have no idea if this is a neutral vessel or not. The visibility outside right now isn't the greatest. So let's try to get the speed right now while we can. We can see the boat just a little bit there. We're not going to be able to make out where it's from. So at least let's get a mark on it here. And measure. Oh, we still have that bug where we don't have our... Yeah, we don't have our timer. That stinks. I wonder why we don't have the timer. I'm going to have to take a look into that mod and see if there's something we can do with updating it. But we don't have a way of knowing how far it's traveled. Okay, no big deal. I mean, the way we're going to have to do it is we are going to have to use some time acceleration then. And let it pass in front of us here. Alright, let's stop our boat. Let it come in front of us and then go on the periscope and see and get a time that way. And what are we looking at here as far as where it's from? I cannot make that out. But that looks like it's neutral. Okay. 
Kind of hard to tell. Yeah, looks like that is a neutral vessel. Let's go into the... Let's go into this camera here. Oh, yeah. Neutral. Okay, well, never mind. Darn neutrals. Okay, we're not going to carry out an inspection on this ship. We are going to let it pass by. So let's surface the boat. He's obviously going to see us. And we are going to continue on our way, everybody. The SS Suvik gets a free pass. So let's continue on. We're going to go south towards the English Channel here and see if we can find anything. Okay, we have funnel smoke, everybody. Our skipper spotted somebody from the conning tower looking out. It's currently September 12th, 1939, 10.15 a.m. We did head on down here towards the channel. We made it about right here and uh, didn't come up with anything, so we decided to go back north, and luckily we are finding something here. So let's click that we spotted some funnel smoke. Let's zoom in a little bit here and make it so that we can get on a course to see what exactly this is. All right. Let's come over here. Alarm, yep. Where is it? There it is. And that is a British vessel. Awesome. All right. So here's what we are going to do. We are going to get underwater. We are going to set our speed forward four underwater here. Do some compression and keep up with this ship, hopefully. Yep, there she is. This is going to make it kind of difficult to get her speed. So I think what we will probably end up doing is we got our stopwatch back. All I had to do was go and install or uninstall the TDC mod and reinstall it, and we got it back. So let's mark her there. Let's start the stopwatch, and let's let a minute go by here. And one minute. How far did she go? 217. And that's going to be seven knots. Yep, okay. Always, always seven knots, so... Let's find the ship again and get locked on to her. Should have locked on to her to begin with as soon as we had sight. There it is. Lock on. Okay, we are locked. We know that she's going seven knots, so we'll just plug that in right away. There we go. Now, let's grab the angle on the bow. Oops. Seventy one degrees. There we go. This should do fine. And we will... Oh, you know what? We need to click this in. There we go. Alright, so we are going to get into a better position here. To allow it... stop our ship and let's get that angle on bow again shall we and then this will give us our distance angle on bow about 49 and 
and that's about what we're sitting at now. I don't really want to mess with this anymore, so that should be fine. And the distance was about 1,500 meters, so that's what we will go with. About 1,500 meters. Okay. So, now that we have that all set, let's come over here and let's flood one of our tubes. We aren't really able to identify what that ship is. To me, it just looks like a regular Empire Bell, so one torpedo should do. One torpedo should do perfectly fine. Let's switch this here. Alright, this is going to have to swoop around one more time before we fire. And I'm a little bit nervous about the, um, uh, the angle on bow. Looks like we're looking at the Empire Patriot is the name of that ship. So we are going to fire one fish. And we're just about to get right into the optimum position there. And we're going to go ahead and fire right now. All right. So away it goes. Let's see how we did. Oh, yeah, it's going to hit just forward. Actually, no, we might be more towards the middle. We should take her down. Oh, yeah. Down she goes. Broke her right in half. Oh, yeah. Empire Patriot sunk, Radio Man. Let him know. That adds another ship. That's number five, everybody. Number five. Let's surface the vessel and go check her officers out. Well, actually, you know what? We don't have any more room. We are full up. And look at them eating. So there's nothing really we can do with them, so... I guess we are just going to... turn away. Another ship right here. It's probably another U-boat out here that was chasing her. Sorry, we got to it first. Alright, everybody, we are going to continue along and see if we can't get anyone else. Okay, guys, we are right alongside a convoy here. It is for sure a convoy. We didn't get any type of notification that they were here. We just came across them with funnel smoke. We just have ships unknown size, and as I started to approach... I saw three warships on her left-hand side right here, so we are going to get ahead of this convoy, get the ship going as fast as we can, and uh, see if we can head them off, and if we can, and get into a good position of attack, I'll let you guys know. Okay, everybody, we are in pretty much the perfect position to go ahead and attack this convoy. I'm not sure why our skipper isn't on the attack periscope to help us out here as far as sight range goes. We should be able to get some shots off on these guys, particularly this one right here, the Empire Cloud. So let's see if we can't find her on our periscope here. That's a warship leading the front. We don't want that. This is who we want right here, and it's very difficult to see, but I'm going to assume that that is an Empire Bell. Like I said, very hard to see, but we are going to get a lock on there, and let's grab her speed. We are going to have to do this quickly.
It didn't, for whatever reason, it didn't set the speed. Why on earth did it not set the speed? That's annoying. Let's try it again. The ship is actually from Norway, but you know what? It's moving in a convoy, so I think it might be good for the taking. If you're moving and being escorted by a British warship, you are gonna go down. Okay, whatever. That's not working for whatever reason. It's not allowing us to set the speed, but we're gonna assume seven knots. It's generally about the speed of which they move at. It's just annoying why we can't seem to set the speed, but it's no big deal. We are coming up on a good firing position on them. So let's get the angle on the bow from our point of view here. Which is going to be about 65 degrees. go. It's distance. It's about 1,200 meters. That's what we'll go with. So this should do right here. And now we might be able to pop a shot off at this one as well out there. So let's flood tubes four and five. Okay, here's what we're actually going to do. Let's stop real quick. I know this is maybe considered cheating. Actually, no, you know, I was going to say we can go for that other ship back here. But that might be dangerous. I don't know if we're going to be able to hit that one. We're definitely going to go for this one right here. But what about this one out there? So we will fire on this one first. Let's get back to our TDC here. It's got to make a couple more swoops around. Get the torpedoes back up here. Use a little bit of time compression. We have that warship that's approaching on us very shortly. Get back to the TDC. And just for sake of time... Let's fire. Let's fire now. Pause. Flood the other tube. So, yeah, we messed that up. So that torpedo's not going to go anywhere towards that ship, because I'm not sure what we did wrong. But um, we're going to fire at this one now, out here. This one. So we gotta look all the way to our right. We messed that first one up somehow, some way. Not sure what we did. But um, that's not gonna hit. But we can go after this other one right here. And get a shot off on this one as well. It's locked. We can ass oh, we didn't set the speed. I think that's gonna be what we did wrong. Well, we're going to assume they're moving at 7 knots. It's generally the speed they are always moving at. Can't believe we messed that first shot up like that. So that torpedo is just going to kind of go nowhere. Maybe we might get lucky and it might hit something. But it's doubtful. 25 degrees on the angle on bow and 1600 meters on that one. Go 1,600 meters. Undo that. Yeah, that torpedo had no chance. So we are going to fire another shot off right here. And then we are going to get under. And pray that we escape. 
Let's bring this up. All right. Fire. Oh, that was our bow. bow oh, we messed up like crazy. That was our Durin torpedo, and we just wasted it. So that's the, uh, well, that's that. <laughs> we gotta get underneath now. Well, big oops there, guys. We need to get better the way that we do things here. Keep going down, we will order blue lighting, turn our gyro compass off, dive planes. And hopefully these guys will just go right over, we are being pinged, but that's okay, looks like they are going to keep going. Well, big oops on our end guys, big, big oops. That stinks. We we messed up big time there. Even more miscalculations. We need better training. That is for sure. Well, we're going to stay under, keep getting away from those ships, and then uh, seeing as we just wasted the rest of our torpedoes, we're going to have no choice but to use the deck gun for the rest of the journey. So as soon as we have somebody else, everybody, we'll be right back. Well, all right, everybody, it is currently September 19th, 9.02 a.m. We have been at sea for about 18 days now, everybody, and I think our boys need to go home. 17 days, 20 hours, and as you can see up top here, we are getting very low on fuel. We are out of torpedoes due to our goof up with the TDC there, firing our stern tube when we didn't mean to, and completely messing up with that forward shot as well on that convoy. So I think we are going to head on back to base, everybody, and go see how we did on this patrol and get a general breakdown. So as soon as we get back to Willemshaven, I'll be back with you. Okay, everybody, back where we started September the 21st, 1939, 10.43 a.m. We have returned to Willemshaven after our first patrol. We have a few things that we need to do here. We need to speak with our recruitment guy over here because we have survivors on the ship that we need to offload. So where is he? Recruitment, there he is, right here. Captain, this may be your new crew. Yeah, we're not going to worry about that for now. We're just going to show you the survivors and release them. You can see we're going to get quite a good amount of reputation for freeing all these guys. Herbert Adams, goodbye. Kenneth Stratton, goodbye. Valerian Yates, goodbye. Frank Young, have a good one. Jim Isaac, good luck. Noel Dudley, goodbye. And Valerian Steele, goodbye. Okay, survivors have been freed. So that gives us one reputation point. Lovely. Now we can come over here to recruit our leading officer and we are going to see how we did on the patrol. All right, it looks like Carl Heinz Schuster gains points to the next decoration. So it looks like he is heading towards Iron Cross 2nd Class for saving Dietrich Meyer 
who dropped of a heart attack during our patrol. He gets two points towards the Iron Cross second class. And then ourselves here, Hans Schneller, the name of our skipper, receives a new decoration, the Iron Cross second class. Iron Cross decoration was established in 1813 by King Friedrich Wilhelm III of Prussia. It has a long tradition in German military. It's awarded for a single act of bravery in the battle. The black core is made of solid iron and the frame is made of alloy called German silver. Well, lovely. We were also awarded Cross First Class. Awesome Iron Cross First Class is awarded for repeated acts of bravery in the battle. It's a higher tier of Iron Cross decoration and comes with a pin at the back instead of a ribbon. All right. And we are working our way towards the German cross in gold for contribution in sinking of Empire Bermuda Freighter. Sinking of Empire Bermuda Freighter. Determined torpedo course at Empire Archer. Sinking of the Empire Archer. Completing our assignment. Determining torpedo course at the Empire Zephyr and sinking the Empire Zephyr. Determining the torpedo course at the Empire Ribble and sinking it as well and the sinking of the Empire Patriot. Awesome, we'll hit next on that. First Patrol. After rigorous training and preparations, your U-boat is now ready for the first assignment. Choose one of the available areas of operation and start the journey, Skipper. All right. Now we can at least start to get on more dedicated assignments and patrols. Empire Bermuda sunk. This ship was registered in Great Britain and was carrying utilities from Bergen to London. Its gross registered tonnage was 3,268. Empire Archer sunk. Our intel tells us that the ship had a gross registered tonnage of 2,666 tons and was transporting raw resources from Bergen to Edinburgh. It was registered in Great Britain. Empire Zephyr sunk. The ship was registered in Great Britain and was carrying utilities from Bergen to London. Its gross registered tonnage was 2,810 tons. Empire Ribble sunk. The ship was registered in Great Britain and was carrying medical supplies from London to Bergen. Its gross registered tonnage was 4,012. Empire Patriot sunk. Our intel tells us that this ship had a gross registered tonnage of 4,188 tons, transporting medical supplies from London to Bergen. It was registered in Great Britain. Well, all right. I would say that's a pretty good solid first patrol, we sank 16,944 tons of merchant shipping. We were at sea for 19 days and 22 hours and traveled a total of 8,718 kilometers. We didn't get any of our additional objectives out there, unfortunately, but that is no big deal. I'm more than happy with this first patrol, everybody. And I think that's going to do it for patrol number one. And this next episode is going to be patrol number two, where we will get more fuel on our boat, buy more torpedoes, get more supplies, select an assignment, and then head on out. I hope you guys enjoyed that first patrol, even though the last section was a little rocky. We made a few errors in regards to our TDC calculations. We need to get a little bit better with that. But thank you so much, everybody who's tuned in so far. That is going to do it for this episode in patrol number one. I hope to see you guys on the next one and take care. Bye bye for now.